In this video, I'll be answering your questions about B cell depleters. If you're wondering about Ocrevus, Kisemta, Briumvi, Rituxan, don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Kavitha asks, what's the difference between Ocrevus and Rituxan? Well, Kavitha, that's a great question. Both of these medications are monoclonal antibodies that deplete B cells, but there are some significant differences. So let's talk about it. A monoclonal antibody is a biologic key. It's developed in a laboratory and it has a very, very specific target. So when you infuse a monoclonal antibody into your body, it only binds to its target. It can't see anything else. In both cases, both Ocrevus and Rituxan bind to cells that express this certain particular hang tag called CD20. So if a cell does not express CD20, Ocrevus and Rituxan simply can't see it and they don't interact with it. If a cell expresses CD20, Ocrevus or Rituxan will bind to it and lead to that cell's death. Which cells express CD20? adult B cells. So that's very similar. Also, both of the drugs are infused in the vein uh, through an IV. And so the route of administration of both of these drugs are similar. Now, the differences are how the antibodies are made. Rituxan came out first. And rituximab is an antibody made in a lab, which is largely made out of mouse protein. It's called a chimeric molecule. And so you may remember from mythology, the Shimra was a mythical beast that had the head of a lion and the tail of something else and the wings of something else. So it was a mismatch. And Rituxan is a chimeric molecule in that it's mostly mouse with a little bit of human. When you receive Rituximab, because there's a lot of mouse protein, your immune system can get really sassy. And so there's an increased risk of infusion reactions with Rituxan. Ocrelizumab, Ocrevus, is a monoclonal antibody which has been humanized. That means that they've taken out as much mouse protein as they can, and it's got a lot more human protein. As a result, when you infuse Ocrevus into your body, you're less likely to have bad reactions. Now, as far as the efficacy of Ocrevus versus Rituxan, this has never been compared. In reality, there's a lot more data supporting the use of Ocrevus than Rituxan. Ocrevus is FDA approved and EMA approved, and there's proper class one phase three data. Rituxan hasn't ever been uh, as rigorously studied, but in my personal experience, the drugs are more similar than dissimilar from an efficacy standpoint. Great question, thanks for asking. Lisa asks the question, with B-cell infusions, is there a major difference between Ocrevus, Ocrelizumab, and Briumvi, Ublituximab? That's a great question, Lisa. Just like in the last question, Ocrevus and Briumvi are both B cell depleters. They both target anti-CD20 cells, and they both are infused in the vein. So just like with Rituxan and Ocrevus, Ocrevus and Briumvi are similar in many respects. The differences, again, become in how they're made. As I shared in the last question, Ocrevus is a monoclonal antibody that has been humanized where they've gone in and they've replaced as much of the mouse protein as possible with human protein, so that when it's infused in the vein, you're less likely to have reactions. Briumvi, like rituximab, is a chimeric molecule. It's got a lot more mouse protein in it. They've manipulated Briumvi by glycosylating it, and so they've attached some sugar molecules to it, which changes the way that it binds. And so that structurally is a little bit different. Ocrevus and Briumvi are also infused over different periods of time. Ocrevus is given as a two and a half hour infusion, whereas Briumvi, the first infusion is four hours, and then thereafter it's only one hour. Briumvi has not been out in the United States very long, and my limited experience with it is that the infusion reactions might be a little bit more challenging than with Ocrevus. But it's still really early in the life of Briumvi, and we still have a lot of experience to gain. Thank you for asking the question. Flapjacks for Life asks, what are doctors looking for with blood tests? CBC platelets auto diff, CMP, quantitative immunoglobulin assay, B and T cell lymphocyte panel when taking Ocrevus? And this question would actually apply to monitoring with any of the B cell depleters. 
So when I see patients in my clinic for Ocrevus, for example, I typically see them twice a year for their infusions. And since we're already gonna be spiking a vein, that's when I like to draw my labs. So oftentimes, I'm checking labs twice a year, and I order many of these tests. I can share with you that part of those tests are just to monitor the patient's overall health. So for example, the CMP, that stands for Complete Metabolic Profile. And it's really taking a look at the person's liver and their kidneys. Now, is that relevant for Ocrevus or B-cell depleters? Not especially, because these medicines aren't metabolized by the kidney or the liver, they're catabolized, they dissolve in the bloodstream. So why would we order that? Well, I'm the shepherd of their brain and I'm supervising their health, and so I think it's very relevant to make sure that their kidney and their liver is doing okay. Oftentimes, people with MS are taking other medicines that are metabolized, and so I think it's a best practice to look at them. The CBC is a complete blood count, and this is relevant, I feel, when you're giving someone a B-cell depleter or most other MS medicines. Specifically, I'm interested in the white blood cell count. And more specifically, I'm interested in the absolute lymphocyte count. So the ALC is something that I look at a couple times a year with patients. I wanna make sure that it hasn't dropped too low, because if it has, that would increase that patient's risk of potential infections. Similarly, when you get the quantitative immunoglobulin assay, that's very fancy pants talk for looking at antibodies. And so we get antibodies in part to make sure that they're not dropping too low. I'm specifically interested in the IgG level. If a patient on one of these B-cell depleters has a particularly low IgG level, again, they might be at increased risk for infection. And so that's something that's very reasonable to check twice a year. The next test you ask about, lymphocyte subset panels, is really something that is kind of nerdy and may not be necessary, but as an immunologist, I certainly like to look at it. It gives you a layer of details below that of the complete blood count in the lymphocyte count. The absolute lymphocyte count is made up of a bunch of different types of cells, and that lymphocyte subpanel gives me very specific information about the T cell populations and the B cell populations. There are times when I wanna know exactly what the B cell populations are doing with these drugs. And so that lymphocyte subset count gives me that information. Great question. Real quick before we go on, if you found some value in this video, do me a solid favor and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Thank you. Carol writes, my IgG levels are too low and they keep going lower. I will either be taken off Ocrevus or I may start IVIG infusions. What are your thoughts? So that's a great question, Carol. When you take a B cell depleter, there's a risk that your IgG levels may drop. Those are antibody levels. And in some patients with lower antibody levels, they may be at increased risk of infection. And so different neurologists have come up with different ways of trying to grapple with that. And I'll share three options. One is to simply assess the patient clinically. Do they have other risks of infection? For example, they have a history of frequent bronchitis. Maybe they are a little bit advanced in age. Maybe they have diabetes. And in that situation, we might be a little bit more clinically concerned. Is the patient having small infections throughout the year, like lots of bronchitis, sinusitis, UTIs? That would also make us concerned. And based on those clinical parameters, you can make a decision about what to do. You point out two other examples. If you give a patient with low IgG levels the IV infusion IVIG, which is a bag full of lots of collected antibodies, you can push those levels back up. You can theoretically keep the person safe from infection and keep them on their B cell depleter. And that's not a bad idea. The third option obviously is to switch to a different medication. Now, everybody's an individual and I think for the individual, the neurologist and the patient really have to come together to make the right decision. That was an excellent question. Thank you for asking. Megan writes, hi, I'm wondering if you can share info about immune mediated colitis related to Ocrevus. Thank you. Megan, that's a great and rather timely question. There was recently an update to the Ocrevus label because there's been a couple rare case reports where someone receiving Ocrevus started to have really bad diarrhea, typically bloody diarrhea. And when they investigated with the colonoscopy and looked at biopsies, they found that this was immune mediated and caused by the Ocrevus. 
And in these situations, obviously, we would maybe need to stop the ocrevus and give the patient steroids to help them recover. I'll share with you, number one, it's super rare. And number two, if any neurologist hears that the patient's having bloody diarrhea, I guarantee they're gonna send them to a GI guy to be worked up. The take home here is, I don't think that we need to be scared because this is very uncommon. And God forbid if you were to have these symptoms, you certainly want to alert your healthcare professional. Excellent question. Zoander asks, when a person taking an anti-CD20 medicine has to have a surgery, how does one manage infection risk? Excellent question. So anti-CD20 medicines are the ones that we're talking about. This would be Rituxan, Ocrevus, Kesempta, or Briumvi. And I think the first thing we have to ask ourselves, is this an emergency or is this an elective surgery? If it's an emergency, then we have to do it. We obviously wanna make the surgeon aware of the risks and we wanna be as cautious as we can, but it's an emergency surgery, so we don't really have a choice. If it's an elective surgery, then I think it's more of a discussion. And here's how I proceed. Number one, I talk to the surgeon and make sure they know the person's on a B-cell depleter. Number two, we attempt to time the surgery a month prior to the next infusion. This gives the person the best chance of having immune cells available to help recover from surgery. And then lastly, we don't redose the medicine until after the surgeon has given the okay. Great questions, Yander. Thank you for asking. The most impactful way that you can help this channel grow is to watch another video. So if you wanna up your game, click the video that's on your screen right now. Until my next Monday morning video, or my next monthly live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.